everyone, my name is Ksenia, welcome back. So, in case you don't know, I'm Russian, and um, Russian literature is a big thing. Everybody talks about it, some people even read it. So I thought I should talk a little bit about Russian authors. I plan to make it as a series, but today I want to focus on those most famous Russian books that I have read. And I thought there would be quite a lot of them, but unfortunately... There's not a lot. So I want to start with Crime and Punishment by Fyodor Dostoevsky, the book that has been featured in so many English-speaking films to show how sophisticated the main character is. So yeah, it's, it's quite a popular book. Um, and we have read it in Russia, we've read it in uh, 10th grade, so I was around 15. And this is the unique, one of the most unique books, because you can imagine that reading all those heavy Russian classics wasn't particularly fun for teenagers, but this book, everybody loved it, at least most of the students really loved it. And uh, yeah, I think it's, it's generally a very well-loved book among Russians. So the novel was written in 1866, and it tells a story about Rodion Raskolnikov, who is a starving student who decides to um, kill an old lady, take her money, and yeah, good plan. So yeah, right from the start we have a crime, and obviously there is an investigation and there is a um, detective, so to say, who investigates it. So this book has the plot of a very suspenseful thriller, but also it is filled with symbolism, with moral discussions, with philosophical, psychological discussions, with two people talking for pages and pages and pages, and it keeps you really suspenseful. And it's filled with amazing characters, they all have their own side plots, and they are fascinating. And with all of the depressing stuff that is in the book, it is still very compelling, and I feel like this one is probably the easiest to get into among all of this all of those heavy Russian books and probably that's why it's featured in so many movies because it's it's kind of like a heavy Russian novel but also it's so the plot there is so interesting that you just breeze through it without any problems so yeah there's that the next one I want to talk about is Anna Karenina by Lev Tolstoy and this one was written in 1877 so it's around the same time as Crime and Punishment. We have never read Anna Karenina in school. I only read Anna Karenina, um, I think, last last year, last December. So it's quite fresh in my memory. And I really enjoyed it. I can't say it's my favorite. I still think that Lev Tolstoy just needs to edit a lot. But it is an amazing, amazing book. It's very epic. There are so many characters there. There are lots of side plots and they all intertwine in a very interesting manner and this one what i like about anna karenina the most is that you are given a set of characters and a plot and you are an observer the author never gives you his opinion on anything it's just lots of morally great characters doing very horrible things but also some of the nicer things as well so it's a huge mixture of all the good and all the bad that there is in humans and you are just watching the shit go down it's lovely <laughs> so yeah there are a lot of characters like i said anna karenina is not the main character her storyline is the most memorable because it has to do with the love affair and it's memorable uh yeah but there are so many other characters the next book i want to talk about is master and margarita by mikhail bulgakov so this book, quite similar to Crime and Punishment, we've read this one uh, at school and everybody has loved this book. I think we were around 14 when we read it and it was the most popular book ever. <laughs> um, and it makes sense because it features witches and Satan and alcohol and I don't know, what else? Talking cats. So there's a lot of fun stuff. All of it sounds a little bit like Sabrina, <laughs> but obviously because it's a Russian novel, it's apart from all of those fun stuff, there is so much heaviness. There are so many philosophical discussions inside and there are some uh, flashbacks to Bible scenes, but 
it has, like I said, a super compelling plot and the structure is very unusual. Obviously, there's a love story. So yeah, everybody at school really loved it. Um, yeah, and it is written in 1940s and it's set in 1920s. So it shows Soviet times, the period in Soviet Union when the revolution has just happened and everything is still fresh and new. And there's quite a lot of satire. It has this Soviet charm. And um, for us, it's maybe not as charming. <laughs> but I feel like for people who aren't that familiar with Soviet Union, who has never lived there or in Russia post-Soviet Union, it's very interesting and unusual to see this Soviet charm. Yeah, so it has that as well. So the next book is Lalita by Vladimir Nabokov. I wasn't sure if I should include it in here or not because the author is Russian but he has written it in English and it is set in the US. It is the least Russian book of all Russian books. <laughs> uh, but still it's quite popular and it is written by a Russian author so I thought I would include it here. So obviously we didn't read it in school because the topic is so taboo and everything. Um, so I read it in university and I didn't enjoy it quite as much as I thought because it's like Lalita, it's such a famous book and everything and I thought it was interesting but yeah, I didn't think it was anything extraordinary. It tells the story of a man who is infatuated with a 12-year-old girl and he kind of lures her into traveling with him and they have this road trip around the US and stuff happens and it's quite uncomfortable to read. Um, but at the same time, it offers a very interesting insight into the mind of this man, which is a good thing and a bad thing. The good thing is that it's interesting to, to know what other people think, even if those people are horrible. But also, it, to me, it was a bit uncomfortable to read because it's, it's not fun to be in the mind of such a flawed character that you really despise. So yeah, like I said, it's the least Russian classic of all Russian classics, um, but still quite interesting. And the next book is We by Evgeny Zamyatin, and this one, I think, out of the books mentioned here, probably my favorite, although I need to reread Crime and Punishment to actually know if this one is my favorite. This one is also the least famous out of these books that I'm going to talk about. Which is a shame. I think more people should read it and more people should discuss it. So this is a dystopian novel and this is like the grandfather of all the, of all the dystopian novels. So yeah, it is told in the form of a diary and it tells... I think it's set in 26th century or something like that. It shows a dystopian society where people have um, numbers instead of names, nobody has any soul or there is no culture, machines are everywhere, so it's quite a fascinating read. I think it is a little bit weaker than 1984, this is just my opinion, but yeah. Uh, but because this was the first dystopia of, this was the first book of the genre that became quite popular, um, I feel like it has so much weight that other novels don't have, especially knowing the story of how the book was written, that Evgeny Zamyatin lived in England at the time and in around 1920s or a little bit before 1920s he came back to Russia, Soviet Union, and he saw everything, all the changes, and he got really inspired <laughs> to create this dystopian, totalitarian society in his book. Obviously it was banned in Russia and it was published in Europe, translated into many, many other languages, then it was published in the US, and then it was published in Russia in 1980s. Originally it was published in 1921 and in Russia only in 1980s. How mind-blowing is that? Yeah, so if you are a fan of dystopian literature and you, ne you haven't read this one yet, you should fix it because this is the original and it's great. <laughs> The last book is Brothers Karamazov by Fedor Dostoevsky again. And this is his final novel. That's the novel that he finished and died shortly after. So basically, we follow three brothers who are wildly different, who have their own separate philosophies and they all 
have their own separate storylines and they all intertwine and they clash a lot of the times and there is their father who gets murdered and there is no one knows who murdered him so it's kind of like a murder mystery but you know <laughs> it's not it's a very heavy book with a huge amount of philosophical discussions um, quite depressing I think this is one of the heaviest Russian classics at least out of those that I'm speaking today but at the same time there are so many things happening that even though it's quite long it doesn't feel as long for example to me Anna Karenina felt way longer than brothers Karamazov for some reason so yeah I think this is it um, I just wanted to give like a short overview of those books and I am definitely not the person to talk in depth about those books because like I said I've read some of them in school some of them in university it was interesting for me to do to learn some more information about all of those books and I just reminded myself yet again that I should reread Crime and Punishment and Master Margarita and like I said I want to make some more videos about Russians in the future and obviously I'm quite excited about making a video about my favorite books and authors which I don't know when I will make it sometime in the future, that's my plan. So yeah, I'll be really happy to talk in the comments if you've read any of those books or if you've read any other Russian books that I haven't mentioned here and I don't know, just let me know your thoughts and maybe if you have any ideas of what you want me to talk about in terms of Russian literature, you can give me some ideas. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!